What are you, like a six foot two elf or something? I mean, well, how tall are you? Firstly, I'm six foot five. So, well, then you um, definitely don't work as an elf. Hey, I am twice the elf of most elves. <laughs> Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from three countries, two continents, and featuring five guys separated only by the same language. Here's your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is and wherever you're listening. As always, we have with us tonight a Mr. Chris Cute. Hello, how are you? Mr. Joe Whitaker. You're right, I'm yeah. Alan Robinson, the woodworking junkie. What's up, fellas? And the answerer of Trolls himself, Jamie Page. How are you doing? But wait, we and, we also, we as well, back from the horrors of our Halloween live show, one third reclaimed, it's Mr. Bill Lutz himself. Well, hello! <laughs> <laughs> Kicking off a nice again. tone. <laughs> How you doing, Bill? I'm doing well, man. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. No problem. It was, you know, you had such a good time with us on, on the Halloween show. We thought we've got to get him back for this momentous calendar event so uh it's great great to have you back with us um just as always going to do a few shout outs of everyone that keeps on for some bizarre reason interacting with us on all our social media platforms so now he sleeps in the bath it's ragtie robert evans waylight creations dave gatton steve french wacky woodworks jim dot bruce chastain shogun jimmy ian hay bob rawson David Gunn, Ken BT. At this point, we'll stop for a quick interlude because obviously the list is getting really long now, which is kind of cool. Carol Kolonowski, Mark Christopher, and Azalees. Don't forget, you too can also be part of this list. All you've got to do is listen to us, rate us on iTunes, and put some kind of comment on one of the umpteen social media platforms where we reside. Uh, and also, even if you don't want to comment, just hit us up on those social media platforms. Just hashtag MI Podcast or hashtag Makers International Podcast. Phew, well, I definitely, definitely need a break now because that list is getting really long. So does anyone want to introduce the main topic and give me a quick little break or should I do that as well? well Richard, I was, I was wondering, why is it Ragtie is sleeping in the bathtub? Did you not see that comment? Did you not see the comment on he was listening to us and in bed and his missus kicked him out of bed because he was just laughing so hard. Oh, is it just me that checks the comments? Oh, I must have slipped through the cracks on that one. Yeah, I I, I saw it. I I, got to tell you guys, when it comes to ragtie and you say sleeping in the bathtub, my (laughs) mind went in some weird direction. (laughs) (laughs) I had to do it. (laughs) There is always that possibility, yeah. It kind of started with a shower scene, but never mind. (laughs) I mean, we're kind of digressing a little bit here, but it really is. I know this list start, does start to get longer and longer and longer, but the, I, I don't know about you guys, but it's really cool that all these people, A, listen, and then B, want to, you know, take the time out and comment. And it's not just comments from them to us. It, it starts off conversations as well between listeners, and that's just insanely cool. So um, should we get back to the main topic? Sure. Yeah. What yeah, is the main not? topic? You're the head the main... elf today. You're the head elf, so you tell us what we're talking about. I am actually dressed partially as an elf, um, as per my videos. Quick plug there, if you don't mind. Um, but we're going to talk about, because obviously it's, it's Christmas, and not just for us, but for all of everyone. Um, well, not just Christmas. Obviously, there are other holiday religious celebrations at this time of year are available. Um, we're talking about Christmas and the good things, bad things we've done throughout the year and how the year has been it's kind of a look back i guess so in other words we're going to try to assess ourselves and find out what santa's bringing us presents or coal coal for me coal yeah, coal, coal. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting cold <laughs> <laughs> but we but, you know what we'll be warm this winter richard because we'll have plenty exactly. of coal. <laughs> bored but i'll be warm. happy with anything as long as it's not more pen kits well as long as you're not keeping warm playing with toys of sort of sorts um, jamie i think we'll all be happy oh god <laughs> <laughs> Again, my mind goes in some weird directions. <laughs> this podcast goes in weird directions, Bill. So you just kind of go with it. We we have to every week. So well, you know what? Let's let's let's, let's let's let Bill kick us off. I mean, Bill, um, I I know you're two 2016 because we're kind of looking back on what's happened. I know yours 
probably isn't the best years that you've ever had, but you might want to fill people in and let them know why. But you've done some cool stuff this year, too. I mean, so it's not all like 2016 really sucked, is it? Um, no, 2016 was um, one of the most eventful I've ever had. Uh, wow, man. The, the year started off, um, I, I quit smoking. That, the, in, on my birthday is January 12th. So on the 10th of January, thank you. Thank you. It's been almost a year. Congratulations. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought, okay, I promised uh, Casey by the time I turned 50, which will be coming up in a few weeks, that I would quit smoking and um, that I gave myself a year to do that. So for you know my 49th birthday, I quit smoking. I thought, okay, everything's going to get better. By the time I'm going to eat whatever I want, because she gave me permission, so I bought stock at McDonald's and... Um, <laughs> I, I put on about 30 pounds or so, and then I figured by March I will... I will uh, get back into shape once I get the cigarette out of my system. And, and turns out in March, I ended up with a, a couple of um, a blood clots in my lungs. So that threw a monkey wrench into uh, the works. And then I thought, okay, well, you know, I survived that. Took some time off of work. Well, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really get, get once I feel better from that. So June came along and I found out I had kidney cancer and had to have my kidney removed. So I, oh, okay, well, yeah, so maybe I shouldn't have quit smoking, but um, that turned into, uh, that turned into six weeks of recovery and um, just a reflection back on, on, so if we're talking about, you know, looking back on why 2016 doesn't suck, um, I can think of five reasons right in front of me. Um, I've, I've gotten to know over this last year, so many amazing makers and, uh, and I'm, I'm on a podcast that's kind of cool, and I've been invited on other podcasts that are very cool. So I don't know what well, you said. How do you say, how do you end the year? You know, it was, it was the most. I've never had any health issues before, so that was kind of scary. But at the same time, I've discovered a whole world and a whole community that I didn't know existed, and I'm just happy to be here with you. I actually feel like I need a hug. No, well, I'll give you one virtual. It's a virtual bro hug. All right. So that's so that. I mean, cause you know what? I'm right there with you. Because, I mean, uh, I, you know, thinking about what we're going to talk about today for the podcast, I think about, you know, I, I started thinking about all the things that I had done and, you know, what's the coolest thing I made this year? What's the stupid, what's the dumbest thing I made this year? You know, I was just trying to come up with ideas and how we could reflect upon the year. And I just it boiled down to what Bill just said. By far, the biggest accomplishment that I've made this year are the people that I've made. Uh, and managed to meet and had the opportunity to become friends with and 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 interact with. I mean, I I look back on 2016 and it's amazing because um, a year ago today, I think Bill, uh, you and I briefly met, uh, and so did Richard and Joe and I. We had briefly met, I think, because we had appeared at one time or another with each other on like an old maritime show or something. So I mean, we had we had kind of met before in the past, but at the beginning Very of the year, briefly. I. I yeah, I, did, I didn't know who Alan was. I didn't know who Jamie was. And there's a whole world of people out there right now that I didn't know who they were either. And here we sit today. We're doing a podcast together. Um, and, we're, and we're good friends. It's just, it's um, 2016 in that regard has been amazing. So I'll, I concur with Bill. Definitely. It's exactly the same on my side as well. I've got to put a lot of it down to the Facebook group. I like to make stuff. I joined that back in November 2015 and that group has really brought the whole community together. It's just the hub where everything spurs off from. That's where we really got to know each other and that's where the whole community seems to be. It's just a great community feeling and that has got to be what the whole year has meant to me, just making new friends through through there really. Yeah, it was when I joined I Make the Lake stuff a couple months after I started that was when I realized the community that was behind this whole thing and that I could actually make friends. It was more than just a YouTube thing and me and myself out here making videos. And just today, I had Jim Dockrell here in the shop and made a wonderful new friend. And he lives really close by, and I couldn't believe it. Such a wonderful guy. And what else is there to say, really? It's kind of like a um, an RV for people who make. You know, and it's a meeting point, and then things happen from it. And uh, it's bizarre actually it was only about three days ago that I, I was thinking i want to be able to do more with all the various groups and the social media platforms and, and everything like that but it becomes very difficult because you and you know you can only spread yourself so thinly before everything's so diluted that nothing's worthwhile anymore you know you, you spread yourself that thinly and it's like where where, where can i not where do I want to, but where can I sort of cut back and put more effort into? And every time I looked at 
all the different platforms and all the different groups, it was everything was kind of going back into that group on Facebook. And it's really bizarre because I, I joined it after several other groups, which were already quite big, but they seem to have been a kind of swallowed up. People have moved into that group and then you meet new people and then you come up with new ideas and you see things and somebody says something about something you've missed and you end up going, look, for it, it, that group has really, you know, it's like the cement for all of us, I think. Um, so one of my things, although we're not looking forward, we're looking back to, to look back on that group. That was a pivotal moment for me to find that group or, or be shown that group on uh, on Facebook. Anyway, I don't know how, you know, would Jamie agree with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the I Like To Make Stuff group is is by far, it's just an amazing group altogether. I mean, I've, I've joined groups before that, before I even knew that group existed. And I used to post links in there and, um, and they'd say, like, take that link down or they'd throw that link away. So it's not... Is and, that the warning we can hear in the background, bleeping? That's the warning sign from another group no i, don't no, know I think that that's actually um, i've heard that sound before i don't know if you guys know that i'm a i've been a maintenance facilities person my whole life and um taking care of buildings is is part of what you do it's, you know, it's facilities maintenance and what we're actually hearing is um a couple of mice and i think one of them just had an orgasm so <laughs> <laughs> as long as the place isn't going to burn to the ground <laughs> Well, identify you know the noise. It's just nice to know the mice enjoy us as much as they do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we had that whole Barry White thing going on for him, but oh, you know, no. that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Let them keep on keeping on. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yeah, I like to make stuff group is by far the best group. It's, it's, it's home. It is. And, it's, and, and, and you know, and, and these are both we're people that we have met and people that we haven't actually physically met um, because um, out of everybody sitting here with us today right now, um, I haven't physically met any one of you. I mean, we have talked several times via the Internet, but I mean, I have yet to reach out and shake either one of your hands. Uh, but there's been a lot of events this year. I mean, I'll, I'll start off. With maybe you guys have gotten together and hadn't had a chance to meet some people. I went down to Atlanta earlier on in the year and met all sorts of fantastic people at the woodworking show down there. Spent some time um, driving around with Izzy Swan and his, and his truck looking for, well, I'm not going to, um, and, well, and, what we, and, 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 and flying his quadcopter when, when people were, you know, expecting us to be working. That was fun. Uh, and uh, you know, but Mark Christopher, uh, Martin Michael, I mean, there's too many people to mention, but uh, that whole get together in Atlanta was fantastic. It was a great experience. Unfortunately, the only one that I had this year, but uh, that was a cool thing as far as uh, one thing that went on in my past year. What about you guys? I know because you guys have been to some events or, and maybe met Bill I know has. He just got back from Boston. Yes, Boston was um, so far beyond amazing. Uh, it really was uh, the opportunity one to meet my pod mates. I'm still speechless. Uh, you know, thinking back again over the last year, one of the things I can't believe, like we've all said, is the this community and getting to know people. And um, two of my very best friends that I feel like I've had forever, I got to meet them. And and I told a room of 250 people that, you know, you guys are all my friends that I haven't met yet. I mean, it's just so weird how this uh, social media thing works. But yeah, Boston was was amazing. Another opportunity to get together and meet people that you see online and you see their videos and you follow what they do and being able to shake their hands and actually, uh, it, well, for me, it was a lot of huggage going on. I, I, apparently, I have a reputation now for, <laughs> for the huggage. You, you <laughs> touchy feeling kind of guy there, Bill? I, you know, I mean, people were seriously lined up to, to get a uh, loot hug and, and it kind of it went a little farther than I thought it would, but it was, you know, I only got molested a couple times and that was mostly Brian. That was Brian McCauley's fault. Uh, but other than that, it was, yeah, amazing. When you, when you get the opportunity to reach out and, and actually meet, meet these people or you folks, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a uh, mind boggling. Isn't it awesome how, when you do get the opportunity to meet everybody in person, that it's like you've known them a million years and you've spent endless, endless hours, even more than people you actually know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mark Christopher showed up to Boston, and that was one of the many highlights that I had. But I know he flew from uh, wherever the hell, Australia, wherever the hell he's from. <laughs> Nova Scotia. Um, <laughs> Australia. <laughs> yeah, Nova Scotia is in Australia, right? No, no. It's, it's, it's just right off of Canada. <laughs> I, I was so gutted about the, you know, the 250 people meeting – um, in Boston for the, the thing I I moved heaven and earth to get there um, you know it's a it's a long way for me to go to it you know it, it, just traveling a nightmare 
and I got there really early in the morning. I'm driving around town. <laughs> I'm trying to find it, you know, the Maker 100 um, event, and I'm asking people, and nobody had a clue. And <laughs> just looking at me like, what? What were you took that? So I'm driving around, and I must have been driving around Boston for like an hour and a half. And in the end, I found the police station. I thought, I know, I'll find a policeman, he'll know. And he just looked at me blankly like, what? And I said, you know, there's this huge event. There's people coming from all over to this event. And, you know, it's at the, the Converse World Headquarters. And he just looked at me and goes, I think you've got the wrong Boston. So in the end, I actually just went up the road to Lincoln and stayed with my brother overnight and came home the next morning. So it was a bit of a letdown for me. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go across that thing you call, you guys call the pond, Richard. We you need to cross the pond. Well, you know, nobody told me. I just, you know, nobody told me I couldn't drive there. So it's like that similar situation going to um, York to see the Empire State Building. It's like I think you mean the new one, don't you? Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> the New York, you know, not the old one. <laughs> Well, I actually went to an event, and events in the UK are very much dragging behind the States, and I think everyone will agree with that. But there was the UK and Ireland Wood Turning Symposium, and that was in Coventry. It was um, in the summer, which isn't too long in, in Britain, but still, it was it was a really nice event. And just speaking like what Bill was mentioning, meeting people in person, it's it was a strange concept for me, because having such a, a small channel, I didn't expect anybody to recognise me and the amount of people that just gave a tap on the shoulder saying all right Joel and like that first initial sorry I don't know who you am and then as soon as they introduce themselves it's like I've known you for years I've, I've known you months we've been speaking back and forth and everything like that and it's just it's that instant connection you, you put a face to a name if it was over YouTube and you haven't got profile pictures and what have you but it's just reiterating what's already been said it's just you, you've made lifelong friends and them, them really true friends there's actually been two people that I got speaking to this year and it's Shane and Tammy and them amazing people and I consider them lifelong friends and I'm going to actually be meeting up with them in the new year in January so I'm really looking forward to meeting the two of them and I'm sure it'll be just the same as if we've known each other all our lives kind of thing so wait, wait a minute aren't, aren't they aren't they in the United States yep they are I'm going over to the States in in January January 26th what, what half which part wait whoa whoa what coast yeah yeah it's, it's like so it's like wait, wait a minute hold on so I'm gonna pull one of Bill Lutz on you and go so you're gonna go all the way from England to there and you're not gonna stop and say hi okay that's fine I know, I know, it's okay. I, know I know where I stand that's... I'm going to um, Arizona I've never never left the country before, so it's one of those things I'm taking baby steps, I suppose. I'm, I don't really want to travel too far out and get lost kind of thing, so I'm, I'm going to stop with Shane and Tammy, they'll look after me. But then after my first trip, I want to try and see some more of the States, I suppose, and I suppose I can drop in on Chris. <laughs> Arizona's only around the corner from me, dude. You can, I mean, literally, if you look on the map, it's like an inch and a half. <laughs> How far are you looking out from? Yeah. If, you, if you look at the map, it's like, well, as you as you fly over, just wave to me, Joe, okay? Just kind of, oh, there's Connecticut. I'll wave to Chris. Hey, Chris how are you? I'm sure I'll feel the love. Not. No, but it's, it's, been a, it's been a year of meeting people. 2016, I think, outside of the woodworking community, it's been a scary year for a lot of people. But in our maker community bubble, it's been a, one of the best ones yet, and I'm really looking forward to 2017. Amen. It's almost like a, a kind of a safety bubble because obviously Bill opened up with his health issues that he's had this year. And, you know, Joe's previously had the health issues, um, ongoing health issues, I think. And everything kind of comes back to the maker community, almost like I say, like a, a safety net, a blanket to, you know, just take stock of everything and forget the things you want to forget about and, and get on with the things that you want to get on with. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I don't know. Would you, would you guys agree with that? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's I guess it's somewhat motivation to, to uh, just get out there. And if you want to do something, do it now. Don't put it off. Um, you know, I, I did a lot of that in 2016 and I did a lot of it that really wasn't very well done. I, <laughs> but you know what? I went out and did it anyway. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's certainly not going to, you know, so sell for thought. Well, it won't even sell most of it. But anyway, um, Hey, it, that, that, that's not the point, is it? The point is to get out and get busy. Go out and do some. Have fun. Absolutely. No one gets remembered for the things they didn't do. Uh, yeah. It just, I'm afraid of the reputation I'm leaving behind for what I have done. That's <laughs> <So, laughs> all. It may not be quite what I had, <laughs> what I wanted engraved on that final stone when they put okay. me away. <laughs> yeah. Like Chris, 
Yeah, he did stuff, I suppose. <laughs> but better to seek forgiveness yeah. than permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I managed to get um, get a couple of shows in this year as well. Um, and uh, just to say what, or reiterate almost, and, and agree with what Joe was saying, when you meet people, who, you know, they come up to you and they know you, but you've no idea who they are. That's kind of a weird feeling. But also the flip side of that, going to meet somebody who you've never met before that you do meet is insanely rewarding. And I think Jamie knows where I'm heading with this one. And um, because Jamie's yeah. actually the Jamie, you're the only person I've actually met in person, which is yeah, that's right, yeah, kind of weird. And do you do you want to tell the story of this one? Because we both met um, April Wilkerson when she came over to London. Yeah, so we both met up there. I didn't didn't really kind of sit down and talk with you personally because we were both kind of talking to April, if you like. And when we weren't talking to April, we was talking to is it yeah, other people? Uh, is it is it yeah other people or uh, is it Cody? Uh, is it uh, Rus- Cody, her husband? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was kind of talking to him as well, so we we didn't really kind of interact with each other, if you like. But uh, yeah, it's uh, that was a, a certainly an experience so if uh, if all the experience of meeting the other makers are going to be like that i'll be well impressed definitely and you know it's just it's nice to get out and actually it's kind of weird getting out and meeting someone that you know that you've never met before yeah yeah it kind of must be a bit like what online online dating is i don't know it was actually funny because uh at the actual um meeting of april i couldn't actually find where it was and i uh, i sent out a tweet and it was actually richard that told me where they were actually all sitting i don't know if you remember i don't know if you remember that i remember seeing a tweet saying where the hell is everyone but i did not know that was you until right now that's yeah that's really a bit weird yeah that was me what was i thinking (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's that, that's, what, that's what happened uh he he didn't see the tweet it's not like he's all oh crap jamie can't find, oh jamie can't find, just pretend like it never happened <laughs> oh, and he won't send battery yeah it was you that gave me the directions so you obviously wanted to meet me well uh, if i'd have known what i know now just go with it richard just go just go with it richard just say sure richard. i mean yeah, edit that bit out jamie yeah no because yes. it was you jamie i wanted you there yeah, you can do that edit can't you jamie yeah <laughs> Well, if I remember, I mean, April is like a, a, a huge maker. Her channel is just, it's uh, its up there. She's amazing, without a doubt. Alan, didn't you have um, somebody with the same size channel-ish whose giant name in, in uh, Canadiana come by your shop and visit as well? Yeah, huge, huge opportunity for me of the year. That was one of the biggest highlights. I've never gotten... You put that smile away, Lutz. I've never gotten <laughs> <laughs> I've never gotten the opportunity to go to an event. My first one will be this February in Hamilton with uh, Laney Shaughnessy. Um, but I did get the opportunity to meet my hero and make some films with him, and it was amazing. And that was with Mr. John Heiss. And uh, I'm going again this summer, and I can't wait. I've already been writing scripts for it and everything. Uh, so... Uh, he was kind of proof to me that it doesn't matter how big your channel is, how little your channel is. That's it's, that's out the window inside the community. It doesn't matter. All you got to do is ask, and you will receive. Do I detect a little bit of a bromance in your voice there? Well, there might be a little something going <laughs> on. <laughs> just, just, just a clap. Because I don't want to step on your toes or anything. Well, he know. wouldn't let me film it, but we took our shirts off and wrestled before I left. Sweet. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, they don't call it wrestling in the UK. Wow, this is getting really uncomfortable. I just turned Rich off. You, do, you don't need me to let this go weird. <laughs> uh, all right, let, let, let me. I got I got an awkward um, uh, hero story for you guys. All right, uh, go. Uh, make, make her fair at the beginning of the year. I've got. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys have heard. I had a lot of people staying over at my house. Um. I had Andy Berkey, I had Luis Gonzalez, um, Wes Swain, and Bill Labolsi. And they're all camping out because we're going to go see Jimmy, Dave, and Bob at Maker Fair. And how amazing is this? So we go, we end up meeting up with those guys, and they were giving a talk. When the talk was all over, we're all standing around. And Jimmy's busy answering questions. All three of them were, but you know, Jimmy's got a pretty good crowd around him. He's answering questions. We're all milling about, and I'm freaking out because I got a few people coming up to me. You know, hey, Lutz, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, Luis comes over and he whispers, says, hey, man, 
we're all going to gather around Jimmy. He's not going to know. And we're going to pick him up and put him on our shoulders so somebody can get a picture. And I'm like, uh, okay, okay. I, all right. I'm, I'm not sure about this now. This is Jimmy Duresta, and we're going to pick him up and put him on our shoulders, right? So I got Mark Schaefer Myers there. There's a bunch of us. And so we all slowly, and Jimmy's so engrossed in talking with people, and we're all gathering around Jimmy, and we're starting to close in a little bit and close in, but we're still, all of us are acting like we're paying attention, but we're slowly getting closer and closer to Jimmy. And just about the time when we're waiting for the signal, Jimmy, I swear to God, he turns and he looks at me and says, you guys are going to pick me up, aren't you? And I'm like, uh, uh, uh. And then the signal goes off, and I'm like, I mean, it was just, it was like, why did he look at me? First of all, it wasn't my idea. I, I didn't really want to do it anyway, but he did. He looked straight at me. You guys are going to pick me up, aren't you? You get to meet some of these guys that are larger than life. Uh, John Heise, April Wilkerson, Jimmy Duresta. And uh, what you find out really quickly is that they're just like the rest of us. And, they, and that's how they want to be treated. I mean, they, you know, Izzy has said that on more than one occasion is, you know, Izzy Swan again to me is larger than life. And he's just like, man, I'm just like you guys. I'm just like you guys. And you know what? He's dead serious about that. And he's absolutely right. He I, is just like the rest of us guys. Um, I've got a story I can tell you about Izzy Swan that happened in, um, in Atlanta. Um, and I won't because I, I don't know if it is would approve. Uh, but I, um, I did have the opportunity to meet one on one with uh, with your podcast mate, Mister Lutz. Um, it was the first. Oh, what, major, the, it, the, the, uh, the hippie dude. Uh, what the yeah, hell is the, his name? The, the ginger dude. What's what's his name? Um, Phil Sway. Phil Sway something. Is, yeah, Phil Sway. Uh, or, 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 or no, it's Tim Pinsky. Yeah, Tim, I, I got I got to meet Tim Pinsky. Uh, I got I got a chance to go over and because uh, uh, Tim Sway is probably my closest uh, maker neighbor. Um, he lives about an hour to my left. Um, and I got a chance to go over and uh, actually, or first this first part of the year, and the one and only interview I've ever done with anybody I did with Tim, uh, because I and because I wanted to go over and see Vance. To be quite honest with you, I really didn't want to go see Tim, but Vance didn't want to talk to me, and Tim said he would, so I did the interview with Tim. Um, but anyway, I because Vance is my hero, Vance Maker. If you haven't heard of Vance Maker, you're missing out because the kid is awesome. Uh, but yeah, that was fun, and uh, you're right. And these and like Tim's just a regular guy, just like the rest of we are too. I mean, these are. Are big guys. I mean, they do their own thing. They they've got a big following, and but they put their pants on the same way you do. So it's cool. Get, reach out. I wouldn't say that exactly. Well, no, yeah. no, Tim. No, yeah, Tim would reclaim the way he did his. Uh, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, so anyway, Tim's weird, but his kid's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking, Tim. That's what you get for not showing up today, buddy. <laughs> Well, I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna agree with Chris wholeheartedly. I got a chance to spend a lot of time with Vance Maker in Boston, and uh, I talk about hero status achieved. That kid, I, I never looked up to somebody so young and so amazing and full of energy and curiosity and brilliance all at once. Like I said, those little things that some of you people make are amazing. I just, I, 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 I have bearded dragons. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way he wants to just do everything and i really envy tim in such a way that you know i wish my daughter who's a similar age wanted to soak that sort of attitude up about making stuff in the same way that that vance does you know you see him with a, wanting to weld and wanting to make and wanting to do everything that his dad does and that is just i'm i of that alone i'm so jealous of tim because you know that it, if he wants, he's going to have a huge long career of making things. And imagine what he's going to be like by the time he gets to our age if he keeps that up. That that's mad. You know, literally do anything yeah. he wants. Now that is so cool. I wish I'd have been like that at that age. Well, I, I got to meet Gwen, Tim's wife, as well, and I can tell you that um, if Vance is the result of uh, Tim and Gwen's parenting skills. Um, that's what we need a whole lot more of. Um, oh, here, here, and I'm sure that applies. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. And, and uh, like, like you're saying, Richard, you know, the, the jealousy of having somebody that's so curious and so imaginative and so creative at a, such a young age, want to be just like you. Um, it's well, Chris is kind of like that with me. I mean, it's like, Oh, Bill, I want to, you know, I wish I had, you know, your mohawk and stuff. So I get it, <laughs> but it's different. It's just different. Okay, That's wait, fine. what? What? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Chris is very different. That's very true. That's, yeah, I'll give you that. I will give you that. <laughs> so what other cool, cool stuff have you been um, been up to then, chaps, throughout the year? I mean, we've got 12 months to think about. There must have been some pretty cool things that have happened yeah, on camera, off camera, around your channel and what you do, and, and outside that as well. I've had quite a few really like mind-blowing things for me because I like to make gifts every now and again and send them out to the fellow YouTubers that aren't necessarily in the maker community because I'm a big YouTube fan as it is and I've got a lot of influences and people I aspire to be like who not necessarily makers. I mean, I constantly talk on the channel about Casey Neistat and it's killed me that he stopped doing his vlogs but still following him all the same. But I, I actually made him a gift a beam logo and he opened it up on his vlog i made a play button for syndicate who was a gamer and now he does vlogging and he opened it up on his vlog i sent a badge and like a plaque that i made for h3h3 H3 productions and now his wife wears the badge that i made in her videos and also philip defranco in the back of his videos, if anybody watches Philly D, he does like a new show type thing. And in the background, he's got a wooden YouTube play button. And every time I see it, he puts a smile on my face thinking, oh, I made that. And he's put that up on the back of his show. And it's just, it, it's just mind blowing to me. These are the people that I look up to. These are who I aspire to be like. And it, it's just, it's just nice. So it, it's been a great year in terms of that. Joe, if you remember, that's kind of how we met. I'm a... I'm a uh, Casey Neistat fan as well, and I was watching his vlog like I did every day, and he opened that up. And I knew of your channel, but I'd never spoken to you, and I nearly crapped myself when I saw somebody in the community on Neistat's channel. And I immediately started messaging you, freaking out, saying, you're on Neistat, you're on Neistat, and you're like, I know, I know, I'm watching it. <laughs> it was, it was great. I had a lot of kind messages off the back of that, a lot of people I didn't realize was fans. I can only imagine how you felt. I was freaking out just because somebody in the community was on it. it. It was, it was scary. I got like jumped in subscribers and I just got an email from somebody. It was really nice what Casey said about your gift. And he was like, hold on. He must have opened it in the vlog and I hadn't seen that day's vlog. So of course I just went straight to it. Yeah, it was brilliant. I'm just happy you still talk to us, Joe, because you seem like a big deal yourself now. <laughs> right? Oh no. <laughs> you, you've changed, dude. You, yeah. you know, it's not like the old video. It's not like the old Joe. Gets on nice start and then like... Yeah. Nose gets up in the clouds. Every, every time I say, oh, I'm, I'm going out to Coventry, I'll be past it. Oh, no, I'm going out and not in that day. No, no. <laughs> no, times that's happened. And still to this day, doesn't answer my calls. When are you next going to be in Coventry? Um, probably the next day you're rewinding your DVDs or tidying out your sock drawer. I was going to say, I'm, I'm busy that day, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, yeah we'll, we'll hook something up. I got, I got really excited about several things this year. I got, to, uh, I got to get some new tools in my shop I was really happy about. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? Can we? Can we? I'm going to talk about it anyway. Forget no, it. you talk about that because then that's going to be me being able to talk about that as well. So you, you crack on, mate. Next time. <laughs> Okay, okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I finally, I finally, 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 after 10, 12 years, finally was able to save up enough of my pennies to uh, upgrade my, uh, and get myself a really nice table saw. Doesn't sound thrilling for a lot of you people, but if you knew the Ryobi piece of, I don't know, what, what do you want to call it, guys? I mean, we want to keep this family friendly. Um, it was. Wrap. Okay, crap. Oh. Yeah, crap works. <laughs> I, I was I was using a re, a, re, a Ryobi uh, table saw for gosh, close to fifteen years, uh, and uh, I really liked it when I first got it. And then as I was using it, like maybe the third week I was using, I realized this thing really, really sucks. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I, I just, I just never replaced it. And I finally saved enough money, so I replaced the table saw. And then I had to because I, I got rid of the Ryobi thing. Because the thing about the Ryobi that I, the reason why I bought it is because it had a router table in the table saw when I bought it. And I went, oh, that's a cool feature. That's what kind of sold it for me. Um, well, then I had to go out and get a new router table. And so I got a brand new router, brand new router table. And then I went and got a brand new lathe. And so now I'm playing around the lathe again after because I hadn't played around in the lathe since I was a kid and I was in high school. And I don't want to tell you how long ago that was, but it was a long time. But last year I got to get a lathe. So I'm happy. There, take that. Joe, stick it up, you nice dad. <laughs> I, I, uh, I also got a uh, a lathe this year as well. That was uh, six months ago. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the, one of the many highlights of uh, this year. One of the, the, the proudest thing, uh, I suppose, of this year for me was just like Luke's. So I gave up smoking, um, yeah, which, which was on the the third of January. Good for you. Good for you. 
See, so that's what I'm after, after many years of trying and failing, I just went, right, that's it, and just stopped. So, yeah, that's uh, one of the many highlights. But although one of the highlights of getting a lathe was a very big highlight, it also has its downsides because it, le- it, it, it led to having to buy loads of pen kits. Now, I'm going to just end that there. <laughs> we know the story behind that exactly <laughs> but then just think that for the good of everything that is turning related had you have made all those pens we wouldn't have had endless topics for the last what three shows about your nuts where would absolutely. we absolutely yeah where would we be without jamie's nuts Precisely. where would we be without my nuts I know we're not I'd like to be. really <laughs> answer that, right? <laughs> no, we're not supposed no. to answer that. Okay. No, that's no, that's one yeah. of those questions we just leave hanging on the shelf. Yeah, just leave his nuts hanging. And they, <laughs> my nuts would never have inspired so many people. Well, I, I tell you what, I'll, I'll pick up where Jamie left off with his nuts. And, I thought he was um, going to pick up my nuts. Well, you're not close enough. But uh, one of the highlights for me this year, in fact, probably the most exciting thing in the world, is not only did I get a lathe, but I got a lathe because Casey and I were at a uh, craft show. And we walked through a couple of turning booths where people were selling their pens and their bowls and whatnot. And she started to just, this look came over her and she turned, she saw, I want to do that. And I'm like, you want to buy one of those? No, 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 no. I want to make those things. How do we do that? And we went oh, that awesome. day. And bought it. Yeah. And um, so that's what we are doing. Uh, she's making pens to start with. And I am making a, a cigar style tube pen holder boxes uh to go that's what everybody's getting everybody's getting for christmas this year um that we normally would buy for so having my wife out in the shop with me um and she loves it she's i, I everybody's warned me it's a rabbit hole i've already spent more money on accessories than the lathe itself um but yeah it's it's just a, a, amazing it's absolutely amazing so that little tiny harbor freight lathe that we bought will turn into a i i I think I need one that's about the size of my Kia Soul, and I'd be happy with it. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. the thing with turning, though, isn't it? There's so many bits. And, I mean, you think there's so many tools and things for just woodworking, but then if you just take turning, there's the same, just for that one tool, the lay. Be very, very careful of everyone that wants to sell you the thing for this and that in turning, because I can remember when I – first bought my lathe and the guy's like oh you need chuck and you need this and you need that and you need that and you need this and you need that and before you know where you are you've just spent like however much on the lathe and three times as much before you can even get a piece of wood to turn you're like oh no so i think that's what people mean by turning is a rabbit hole Mm -hmm. well the, the worst part about this whole thing not the worst part it's all been amazing but at the same time we i found out my wife wants to learn how to turn things um I discovered there's an actual woodcraft store within 20 minutes of my house. Uh-oh. And that's where it all went downhill. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, it was just, it's, it's, and there's like, you know, there's five people that know everything about everything that work there. And it's even worse then because it's like, I walk in, it's like, they, they, they just like Vulcan mind control. They know what I'm thinking of. You just bought a lathe, didn't you? Follow me. <laughs> yeah. It was weird. It, it was weird. Be it's strong, like, though. Be strong. I, I bought, I bought I, it's funny because I, I, I just went yesterday because uh, Casey says, hey, I want some more blanks. I want them to look like this. I saw some colored wood. So I'm like, okay. I'm. She gave me like $36 to buy some pen blanks. So three hundred and seventy-five dollars later, because they had a sale. It's Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas, and I had a ten percent coupon. And I, I now have a, I have a three-in-one multi-bad mama jamma chuck that fits this tiny lathe. But the guy told me, what's nice about this when you upgrade, this chuck will fit on your new bigger and better lathe. Of which, by the way, is over here around the corner. I ran out of that store screaming by that time. So. <laughs> which, which, by the way, is waiting for you right around the corner. Here, yeah. Uh, well, the other thing is, gets you know, I think that's awesome that Casey's out in the shop with you. I think that that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's uh, I mean, to, uh, in all seriousness, um, it's I, I can't tell you how amazing that is. To, to she's an artist in her own right with uh, what she does with hair, and uh, her creativity is I, I'll match it up against anybody in the world, but 
for her to take an interest in my world is uh, wow. I, I mean, I've, I fall in love with my wife, honestly, all the time. And it's, that's just one, one small part of why. I have seen the the pens that she's turned out and they are amazing. She's pulled off some beautiful work there. I mean, having, being with somebody who just gets it is priceless in its own right. And if anyone out there and Bill's nodding like, you know, the dog on the parcel shelf of the car, if, if you're with somebody who doesn't quite get what you do, there is potential for conflict. But if they get it, it makes everything you do together so much simpler and also you can get away with a lot more yeah you can get away with going out for a pen blank and coming back with that log because they understand <laughs> you know it's yeah. it's funny too it's kind of a payback for me as well because when she first started um well she went to cosmetology school she's been cutting hair forever she cut all her friends hair um she went to college and was going to be one thing and you know like everything in life she decided one day she wants to go to cosmetology school. So I was there for her when she did that and she opened up a salon. I'm just like, Oh my God, this woman is incredible. Her and her friends. And so a year or so into the salon that they have it open and she come home from work. Oh, I just bought some new scissors. Check this out. Tools of my trade. I'm like, wow, those are really nice scissors, honey. How much did you spend on those? $650 for a pair of scissors. <laughs> Well, <laughs> can I uh, can I ask? Are they the same scissors that she uses to cut your eyebrows with now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's really not important. Um, <laughs> but I will say this: is that it is it is it is payback to know that those are her tools, right. and just like when I go out and I want to, you know, and I want a quality tool for myself in the shop. Mm -hmm. I, I get that now. My fear is, is that now that she knows it's okay to have quality tools and she really likes turning, I, I can't ever let her go to woodcraft by herself. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Oh, ever. yeah. I wish I had that problem because I have the opposite of the, that problem. My wife doesn't get it. Um, she, she gets my desire to do it, right. but she doesn't get it. I mean, you were talking about, you know, having a woodcraft around the corner. I, Bill, I, I have to go up to another city just north of me in Danbury um, to go to the big box stores. And that's where the Lowe's and the Home Depot and the Harbor Freight is. And they're all on this one road. And anytime I get in my car with my wife, if we're traveling to wherever we happen to be going together and, we, and that we have to go down that road, she will put her hand up on either side of my head to block my sight so I can't see the harbor <laughs> freight. I can't, I don't, don't even think about going to the Home Depot. Don't go to the load because she knows I can't resist. I got to pull in there and just take a look around. And she, she will not stand in a hardware store with me whatsoever. She's like, no, honey, if you pull in there, we, we're, we're going to get a divorce. I was like, oh, okay. I, was like, I guess I'll just keep rolling. So she gets it, but she doesn't do it. You follow me? I, I guess that, that, that helps. So, yeah, to she's answer Richard, she's supportive, but she's but supportive. She doesn't and have it, that it, same to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have any conflict in the house, Richard, because she gets my desire, but she doesn't get what I do. She looks at me and thinks I'm a friggin' nerd, which maybe she's right, but in our little group of weirdos and nerdos, I'm not kind of, sort of. Am I really, guys? Oh, no more than anyone else, I would say. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? No, my, well, my my wife Crystal is right in the same space as that. She's 100% accepting of all the time I want to spend out here in the shop and making videos and all that crap, but I can't drag her out here for the life of me. She wants absolutely nothing to do with helping, even helping lift something up. Not, I'm on my own 100% out here, but it, 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 as long as I come home every night, she's, she's okay with it. Well, I've, I've seen that from, and we're kind of digressing a little bit, I guess, and it wasn't the topic, but I've seen it from, from both sides of that. Somebody who just does completely get it 100% like utterly gets it a hundred percent and somebody that doesn't get it and isn't really interested either. So I've seen both kind of extremes, mm. but not I literally went from one extreme to the other. Um, thankfully in the right direction, but yeah, I totally get the, you know, not being interested, but being understanding. And that, that's what any partnership marriage relationship is about, whether it's about making or about drinking. You know, whatever the interests of the parties are, as long as the other person understands, you know, um, I'm not a marriage counsellor. I'm not a, um, a, a psychotherapist. Don't get me wrong. Um, don't don't email me with um, your marital problems or, or, anything, or, you know, 
Because Richard's Actually, response is going to go, go drinking with her. Just go drinking with her. <laughs> yeah, just, just get a drunk. Everything will be fine. <laughs> right. I think we need to go way back on topic here. <laughs> I, I had, you know, in sticking with them um, or going back to what Chris was saying about having a new tool, I, I was super, super, super excited and very lucky as well, I have to admit. I managed to get hold of a new dust extractor um, a few months ago now. And I think if you, you guys might have seen the video that was put out of the the fine dust extractor and that thing is way cool and what made it even sweeter is they sent it to me to look at which doesn't happen every day um and they did all the video in as well normally if somebody sends me a tool they want me to do the video and all the rest of it um but they said you know we'll send a, a film crew up to film the, the thing as well and it really is cool and i, I genuinely genuinely love that um shop R- so Richard, can, I, can i translate for the north americans here um we're just talking about a vacuum guys it's a shop vac what did i call it uh well you call it a dust extractor and that just sounded way too you know proper and and complicated it's a shop vac right <laughs> no it's so much more than that <laughs> 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 no, seriously, it, yeah, it's a, it's a really big shop vac, but it's awesome. It really is super awesome, but mega expensive. And there's no way I would have been able to afford it for a long, long time because it's like serious, serious money. But, uh, that was me. Yay. I was chuffed. That thing is like, like one, that thing is uh, comparable to like the one that Festool puts out that is like crazy expensive, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're about the same price and it's their law. It's, it's comparable to them. It, well, it's a 35 litre capacity so that's like the um, the festal middle size one of the bigger ones um, but it, yeah it, it's way cool you know it's got it beeps at you if the hose gets blocked normally i have to work out that it's not pulling anything up it but this thing beeps at me and it cleans the filter itself so yeah what more can you ask that's huge i've put a new handle on my broom <laughs> you, you've had the same same broom for the last 12 years though joe because you're that tight <laughs> but <a new> one. <laughs> joe's, joe's drug dust extractor is uh, is that 40 <laughs> new handles and 50 new heads <laughs> you got it trig <laughs> well merry really, christmas buddy what's everyone working on christmas presents casey and i she's making pens i'm making pen boxes and that's going to be the our next uh week of stuff that's that's what I'm working on, and I'm also working on my attitude. Apparently, that's a problem too. But <laughs> that's another topic. <laughs> Christmas presents, Richard. That's uh, um, I I'm not gonna have any videos coming out any for, uh, for this week. I don't think uh, at all because I just don't have time. I've got I've got I'm under the gun. I've got to get things done. I'm one of uh, Santa's. I don't look like you, but I, I actually am one of Santa's elves this year. And nobody I've, looks like me. No, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to look like me. <laughs> I wasn't going to thank God, but that's uh, that's what I'm working on. I'm working on Christmas presents. What about uh, what about you, uh, Alan? I too am working on Christmas presents. I spent about 12 hours from after work right into the morning Saturday, uh, batching out candle holders. Like uh, I'm up to about 30, 36 of them now. I'm just getting everybody's getting candle holders. I thought it would be easier than it was to batch that many out, but it wasn't. That was a long time. But Christmas well, presents. Uh... <laughs> Speaking of candle holders, that's what I've been making. The, uh, I made the, my first one a couple of days ago, which is going nice. to be a present for um, my for girlfriend's me. grandmother. And then I made the second one straight afterwards. That's uh, nice, Jimmy. Just two light holders. This uh, is a podcast, though, and no, nobody can see that. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was just going to say there's, uh, there, there, are, uh, there are pictures of them on my Instagram. There you go. You and check them over. <laughs> yeah, you did. You at, uh, Chris, at, at, uh, at JP underscore Woodworks. Yeah, he did. Uh, plug. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I've working on. I've got a couple of pens to do as well for Christmas. So they'll probably end up being blue. Are you, are um, you videoing these, Jamie? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm not, uh, I can't at the moment because uh, my sister and my niece went to go and see a concert and my niece stole my camera. Oh. Um, so or borrowed it shall i say you know ever steal a youtuber's camera yeah or uh yeah borrowed it without my permission <laughs> what are you doing joe you are you busy in the shop you said as elf this year or what are you, what's up what, what's going on with you right now yeah I'm, I'm keeping up with the um the christmas spirit i've been working on one of my old halloween projects 
I'm uh, not quite ready to discuss why, but I'll be I'll let everybody in on it in a few weeks' time, I suppose. But other than that, I've been planning for future projects. I want I'm going to be making a, a child's bed soon. The one a Power Ranger bed, so that should be a fun project to do. So I've been designing that on SketchUp. Cool. Has it, has it morphed into anything yet? <laughs> it's morphed into loads of different iterations of designs, but I don't know. I don't know how the final project will come out, but yeah. Awesome. Well, what about the head elf, Richard? Um, well, as one might expect from the head elf, I've been you know basically doing the same as everyone else. Loads and loads of Christmas presents. Um, I actually did a like a, a Christmas fake come craft fairy type thing that was in the local village. Um, it's like a charitable event. So I batched out a whole load of stuff that I was going to make as presents anyway. I just made like extra of everything, had a little Christmas stall, um, which went really well, thankfully. Um, am I I'm hoping to have three, possibly even four Christmas videos out this year, um, which might sound insane, but I've just been basically videoing a lot of the, the, the gifts and some of them are really, really quick. So they might not come out until just before Christmas but you'll still have plenty of time to make them. So um, there's a toy that I make and the the reindeer video, which is already out. Mm-hmm. Um, the There'll be a couple of different candle holders, which will be out possibly by the time this podcast goes out. So uh, yeah, those, and also some routing videos as well. So really, really busy. I think I've been working on about four or five videos in the last week, along yeah. with presents and you have been busy. And uh, if you don't mind me interrupting, I just want to take the time to say thank you uh, to Bill for uh, coming on the podcast with us today. We had initially, um, we tried to get uh, all three of the Reclaimed Audio guys here. The scheduling just didn't work out for, for uh, Tim and Phil because, you know, it was kind of a last minute thing when we decided to do it. But Bill chimed in and did it because we wanted to do, uh, you know, we wanted to have the Reclaimed Audio podcast on here and give those guys a shout out because we absolutely love what you guys do over there, Bill. I mean, a fantastic podcast. Congratulations. And I look forward to see what you guys do in 2017, buddy. Oh, so do I. I as long, I, it's, sure. it's week to week, you know, I, that I keep my job, but. Yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully, uh, 2017, I'll still, I'll still be uh, working. With yeah, the, I don't know. Yeah, Izzy's been knocking on that door, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think Izzy needs to get his own damn podcast going on quick because I'm tired of worrying, looking over my shoulder. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> you know, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps your mind active. You know, it keeps you in the game, though. So, don't think it's no, a negative. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm going to be 50 real soon. There's nothing that keeps me on my toes or keeps my mind active anymore. I'm just cruising on instinct. <laughs> Go with the flow. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, what's everyone been watching um, over the last week or so? I mean, has anyone actually had any time to watch anyone else's videos? Um, I've watched uh, I've watched well quite a few videos, actually, but one that uh, stuck out for me was uh, Brian Bales. Uh, I've always been quite a big fan of uh, his uh, videos. He's uh, he's he's an amazing craftsman when it uh, when it comes to woodworking, and his videography is absolutely incredible. And he's so good at it as well. Um, and this week's project that he uh, he done was it's was um, uh, the Calvin and is it the Hobbs or the Hobbs Snowmen uh, project that he did? Yeah, that was cool. And I saw that. That that was it. Was, really good it was he, he has this thing going where he kind of talks to himself you know like the jay bates does he has two of two jays but he has like bales one and bales two talking and interacting with each other <laughs> and uh the way he does it it's it's so funny but yeah my shout out goes to brian bales his channel's just called bales so there you go alan what about you uh jim doc otherwise known as Doc and not Doc Halbrin. Uh, I had him over to the shop, uh, kind of going back to what it's like meeting, being able to meet other makers in person. But him and I, he, he was here all day today, actually. He just left about uh, two hours ago. And uh, we hit it off like crazy. I have a new really good friend, but he has a very cool channel uh, out of Seaforth, uh, just called Jim Dockrell. Uh, he makes uh, Fender Stratocasters, uh, He's uh, in the middle of a coffee table build for his wife that everybody should really see. It's really, really awesome work, so uh, be sure to check him out. Chris, awesome. what are you watching? I am watching um, – do you guys know who Sam Ray is? Oh, yeah. She. It's a she. Sam is a she, and it's her last name, but she goes by Ray. It's actually yeah. a longer last name than that, but she's known as DIY Huntress. 
if you haven't, if you're not familiar with Sam, go check out DIY Huntress on YouTube. Uh, she's uh, super busy because she's in school, and so she doesn't put out a ton of videos. But what she does put out, it's worth watching. Go go watch it. She just made a uh, pallet wood upcycled kind of uh, Christmas tree thing that she just put out, and I thought it was just really cool. So if you have the opportunity, go check out Sam Ray uh, DIY Huntress on YouTube because uh, that was a great video. I want to give her some love for that. So good job, Sam. I think she's got a pretty cool Instagram account as well, hasn't she? Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Yeah. What about you, Joe? Well, um, this week I noticed in my subscription box something that probably made Alan quite jealous. The fact that John Hoyes has had a, another visitor to his workshop. He's been spending some time with Matthias Wandel, another fellow Canadian, and just the two of them together, the way their minds work, it was it was a recipe made in heaven, I suppose. They've been comparing their homemade tools, like the bandsaws, the belts, sanders, everything like that, and just overall having a really, really good time together, having a laugh. I mean, one, one scene that stands out to me was John testing his biscuit joint shelf pins and he, he jumps back on it and of course <laughs> yeah. just goes flying straight down but well worth a watch them on both their channels so john hoys on youtube and matthias wandel on youtube go and check them out them brilliant content creators and, and this series that's going out at the moment it's well worth watching john heiss looks up to matthias wandel the same way i look up to john heiss they them amazing they're all people to look up to just the way their mm. their mind their creative process works and that the end results that they come out with is, is absolutely phenomenal so uh, definitely but what about bill i promised bill i'd ask him first and yeah don't I'm worry sorry, about bill. me i'm just sitting over here in the background i don't get mad <laughs> <or> jealous <laughs> or upset. no the, the guy the guy i want to give a shout out to is um he he works for converse and he's the one that made possible um the event the making it 100 event uh and he built a lot of the the fixtures inside of the, the, this, uh, 200 year old building. And he was, he was, he helped them get it restored, but he just started a YouTube channel and it's called never not making. And I mean, literally has like 120 subscribers or something like that. So I thought maybe we can all, um, show him some love and bump that up. But he's to say he's creative is, is the understatement of the century. So check out never not making with Matt Riganini, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Um, and Regonini, Matt Regonini, never not making. Check him out. Subscribe. Give him some love. Just show him what uh, Makers International is all about. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we're, we're all about the international for sure. Um, definitely. Oh, I thought you were going to say for play. I was like, I could do that. That's fine. <laughs> but there's five of us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I, I'm going to have a, a shout out. I found this person because I was actually, and you, um, just bear with me, and honestly, I was actually planning, four planning, five planning, next year's stuff. So some of the ideas I've got for my channel next year. And I came across a, a lady called Susan Gardner. Um, she's got a, a YouTube channel around about, five and a half thousand she's a, a british woodworker maker a bit of a musician she does a bit of science in her channel and she makes some quite cool um videos so go and check her out susan gardner um and see if you can guess what i'm planning to do for next year as well oh. Oh. Ooh, maybe maybe leave it in the comments yeah, there you go there you go, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, but Such uh, what, a tease. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But no, seriously, it's, it's a really good channel, and I, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm going to really, really try hard for next year. But on the on the subject of um, leaving comments, one thing I will be looking for for uh, for next year is um, it's going to be talked about in next week's podcast. So make sure you tune into that because I'll be asking for some audience participation, not just in the show but also in my channel as well. And that goes for you guys. I'll talk to you guys afterwards about that. So awesome. Heads up. Um, and obviously that invite is is for you as well bill because why not oh thanks yeah. i appreciate you more than you know. i bet chris does <laughs> <laughs> definitely more than chris does i'm the bane of chris's life when it comes to uh, researching the show and uh, keeping to times and generally knowing what the hell's going on so yeah probably <laughs> cool so where can everyone be found bill where can people find you well, thanks to Make, Build, Modify, Justin Sparks, I have a website, williamlutz.com. Everything that's important to me is there, and I don't know how it works, but it does exist. Cool. Chris, um, you on you, Instagram yet? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook under Make the First Cut and on YouTube under my name, Chris Cute. And no, and don't search for me on you on Instagram because I don't have cell service at my house, Richard. How in the heck can I use Instagram when I don't even have cell service? Explain that to me. Uh, you just take a picture on your phone, then you connect. Then to I run down. That, that kind of that kind of the whole that, <laughs> that kind of negates the whole Insta part of Instagram, doesn't it? I mean, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> well, you will get a Delayagram account then. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to be quite as popular as Instagram. But so yeah, no, I don't have an Instagram account. Anyway, so, uh, Alan, where can you be found? God, move on. <laughs> I'll start that account for you. That's uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube under the Woodwork and Junkie. Jamie. You can find me on YouTube at JP Woodwork, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at JP underscore Woodwork. Good stuff. And how about you, Joe? Average Joe's joinery on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Average Joe's photography on Instagram. Fantastic. Well, I've been Rick Morley. You can find me at brainfizz.uk and under my name on YouTube. And don't forget, you can also find us across all the social media platforms. We'll make sure that somebody puts it into the show notes. You can listen to us next week on the show. So, cheerio. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I thought Alan was going to say, have a Christmas. I was just waiting for that, and it never happened. Oh, didn't occur to me.